Welcome, y'all. What's up? Hey. What's up? So we're going to ask a few questions um, right. for our tech panel. And so my first question to you all is, what attracted you to the technical field? Go first. Sure. Um, so I am a non-traditional technologist, so I did not grow up studying technology. Um, but no matter the jobs I had, um, I worked in investment banking, consulting, building teams abroad, I started to see that technology was like the connector and digital just had such a disruption on everything. Um, and so I was just more interested and wanted to be a part of it because there was no doing any kind of business without technology. Yeah, I think for me, I started out as, I like to call myself like an artist that can't draw. So I always wanted to be creative, I always wanted to do something with it, and software engineering was a way for me to build spaces where people could create things. And that's what really drove me towards wanting to be an engineer. Uh, for me, it's just like really cool. Um, I like being able to come up with designs and come up with ideas and then be the one to implement them and figure out ways to like, uh, not only is what I'm coming up with cool, but how we do it is also just yeah. as cool. And like, I like figuring that out in that puzzle of like, ah, like this, we have this cool idea, how are we gonna build it? So tell me a little bit about your job as director of security. Yeah, so I report to um, Riot's chief information security officer. And I essentially have a focus on our games pillar. Um, we work with the games team really well, especially at the engineering level, but cybersecurity has to be more than an engineering thing. So I'm essentially creating the connective tissue between all aspects of the business life cycle and cybersecurity. So how do we look at M&A, R&D, working with third party vendors, and essentially making security not just a tactical lever, but also a strategic lever for the organization. Um, is software engineering. So what does your day-to-day -day look like? So for me, I am a uh, engineering lead or engineering manager, and I'm also a tech lead. So it's kind of like two roles uh, of being a leader in kind of in one person. So uh, on the engineering manager side, my job is to grow and build teams that are able to make basically the fun that happens in video games. Um, and then, so that's, I'm look, thinking about their careers, I'm helping them grow to the p people or humans they want to be, how they want to make an impact at Riot, um, but it, it also drives the product. But on the tech lead side, I'm the one who is thinking about what technology are we building, why should we build this versus that, what problems do we need to solve in the tech, and, and guiding the engineers as well as the other content creators that are with us on like how to use the technology effectively. And George, you have a very interesting job in that you're a game designer. So what does that look like for you? Yeah, as a technical game designer, uh, like my first kind of primary role is coming up with cool, fun uh, game designs for players to check out in the game. Um, and then as a technical game designer, my, my role is kind of communicating with design and then translating that to tech so that we can actually build it and being aware of all the, the limitations and the, the growth opportunities for a te technology, and then growing that technology and explaining what tools we as designers need and what uh, information that the engineers need from design to kind of bring us in harmony and get things out to players. So in your roles and in your time in the industry, what challenges have you had to face to get where you are now? So I think the interesting thing about having a career in cybersecurity is things are so rapidly changing, specifically um, from the defensive perspective, like how are hackers really evolving their attack strategies, and then how do we need to enhance our security ecosystem to be ahead of the game? while also thinking about what are the new innovations in the technology space, and then how do we leverage those to support Riot as a business. So everything is just rapidly changing and really just trying to stay ahead of the game so we don't have any significant misses. I think that's the biggest challenge that I face. What about you? On a day-to-day -day basis? Day-to-day, -day, career-wise, whichever challenge you think is, you know. I think one of the biggest things, one of the biggest challenges that I face on a day-to-day -day is like building and growing teams that are diverse. 
So, I mean, this is kind of why we're here. This is why we're talking to a lot of you beautiful people is to try to bring more diversity within this space. And I think that's always a challenge. It's like, I want to make teams that look like me. I want to make teams that represent gamers that, so they can see someone that looks like them in the game. And having that, like, cultural understanding, that connection is really important for the titles that we build and the content that we deliver to players. So you want to have someone that has walked that walk and understands that thing, but it's difficult because the 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 pool is so small and, and like, so you're really searching out there for not just a needle in the haystack, but it's like a needle in a needle stack. Like you've got to find the perfect needle in the needle mm -hmm. stack and, that, and that's a very difficult thing to do and we're always searching and we're always pushing and that's why we're here. And George, what about you? Uh, for me, because I'm in this kind of dual role, a lot of my challenges come from communication, communicating from these two very different mm -hmm. uh, disciplines. Uh, that have like kind of a mix of diversity that is different on each team. Um, and so like translating and being able to communicate, these are the design ideas and these are what the design needs and then these are the, the technical limitations and kind of bridging that is like pretty much the biggest challenge that I face, but it's like something that I love. I love that communication and I kind of love that friction because that breeds creativity. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to students who do want to enter tech as a career? So one of the biggest things that was important for me was learning how to be a good mentee. We talk about mentorship all the time, mm. um, but I think one of the bigger, um, who holds the heavier lift really is the mentee. So understanding you know, how to actually select a good mentor, right? Coming prepared to those conversations, being proactive about doing some research before. Um, and then also really evaluating you know, what's important to you? What do you bring to the table? What are your interests, right? Because as the technology field continues to evolve, the careers do not look very cookie cutter, right? That's the reason why somebody like me can sit here and be a part of the conversation. Um, so there's always continuous learning, um, but specifically how to build and maintain relationships of value, um, because that's really where a lot of the opportunities come from. And Joshua? I think for me, I think the first thing is to um, recognize the value that you bring to this space. Um, no one can tell the stories that you can tell the way you can tell them. And we need those stories, we need people with those voices to be here. So that's number one. So know that you belong, know that, you, know that you're valued, know you deserve to be in the space. And I think number two is, is that now, um, making games is very democratized, right? Anyone can go and download Unity, Unreal, so you should never walk into an interview and you have never made a thing, right? As a person who interviews a lot of people, um, it is always really enjoyable to have someone come in and it's like, hey, I made this game on my own. I did this on my own. And now, I always say that like, as an interviewer, if you come in with nothing, the ball is in my court now. I'm controlling the interview. But if you made something, now the ball's in your court. You're controlling the interview. You're able to actually express your feelings, understanding, your know about like how to build a game from start to finish. And that conversation drives me to go, man, this person really has a lot of drive to do a thing. Like, oh, I want to bring them on my team. Whether they have a bunch of experience or whatever, I'm, I'm really interested because they have grit. And that's the thing I think is really invaluable for new people coming and want to be a part of the industry. And George, what advice would you give? Uh, for me, um, it's that games and technology do not get created by one person. Mm. There's a bunch of people and teams working together to create and make all these things. And like understanding that and understanding that like the people around you right now, whether you're in college or high school, they are all coming into this uh, community of game developers and technology together with you, and they are who you can leverage. Like every person next to you right now is a, someone that you're likely going to know in the future. And being able to leverage that to your advantage and being able to come up and be, have a community of your own to help each other out and to bounce off ideas and to improve each other, like it's invaluable. Like it is your best asset is each other and yourselves. So make friends and like keep them, keep updating and like keep each other accountable. It's like my favorite thing about the industry is working with people. And Joshua, you brought out a point about someone who possibly build games on their own time or like really investigate the tech um, side of it on their own. What type of languages or what type of um, programs are available for students to investigate on their own if they're interested in that? So I think like um, 
you know, there's like, I have a computer science degree. Um, I, think that's, I think that is a, that is a route you can go down, right? You go get a comp sci degree and you can push that route. But I think that what I would suggest is, is that if you're really into this and you really want to know, is this something I want to do? I mean, I know all y'all on YouTube. You, you can just look it up on YouTube. Like it's real easy. Just search video game programming, search Unreal Engine 5, search Unity, and you're going to get tons of videos and not just like a video that's like an intro. You're going to get, you want to make this game from start to finish and it's 30 videos. Of, there's so much content out there that allows you to be able to learn these things. Um, and as far as languages are concerned, I would say the most prevalent language within game dev is probably C++. Um, so, but I would say also that if you know C Sharp, it's already pretty prevalent as well. Um, but to me, it's like, I think learning a language is like, um, it's like learning how to speak, right? Like if you can speak, if you know how to speak, you can solve problems and you can transition quickly into languages as long as you understand what good software engineering is and generally what good collaboration looks like. And, and George, do you have any tips that along the same lines? Oh, yeah. I think um, having some sort of base, almost like book knowledge, is always important. I got a degree, a computer science degree um, for that side of it. But like, like Josh said, my game design knowledge, like my game design degree is from YouTube. Like I graduated from YouTube doing exactly what he said. I'm like looking up your videos. There's like GDC talks that get uploaded. I'm, I'm like, anytime I can learn something, I'm learning and then like trying to bring it back and like, hey team, I watched this video. You might like, like we might be able to implement some of this or try some of this out. It's invaluable. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time and the information that you shared. So we appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. Thank you.